So this morning we're looking at remembering, remembering God's words, um, we, or God's wonders. Um, there's, this, there's this drug that can help you remember. You can buy it at the grocery store or at the, the pharmacy, Rite Aid and all those places. I was going to buy a jug, but I couldn't remember what, what it was. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm running through that. Is this one to help me? You know, is this the one that helps your memory? I couldn't remember which one. So, so we are to remember what God has done is often association, associated with reflecting on God's acts of grace and mir- blessing and his miracles and, and that often come throughout history. And that's what we do, you know, looking at Sunday school and remembering and teaching and going over the events that we are doing now with Israel coming out of Egypt and now entering in the promised land, transition of leadership from Moses to Joshua, we are reading these stories, and they are not campfire stories, okay? They are not stories that are made up by um, someone trying to be outdo the other in, in, in campfire stories. Well, we know through archaeological digs and through ar- the archaeology of coal finds that the events of the scriptures are as they said they were, and it is a very um, important historical record in the, uh, is the Bible. So remembering encourages believers to recall and give thanks for the way God has shown his power and his faithfulness in our personal experiences. Remembering how God has shown his faithfulness in our personal experiences. Psalm 105, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done his miracles and judgments he pronounced. Remember, (laughs) remember, uh, think about what God has done, not only in your own life, but uh, in the lives of others where we've heard or seen of God's miracles. Um, When we think about our lives, it's evident we have a past, we have a present, and we have a future. The problem is the present is so brief. (laughs) In fact, it's just a moment and it's gone. You know, history is what I said five minutes ago. <laughs> so the moment is what is it we are experiencing now, and the future is what's coming. And, you know, pretty, pretty simple. But the problem is the present is so brief, <laughs> uh, we have to really focus on it and anticipate it in order to be able to live in that moment. So more and more of our life then is about our past. And if we don't take the time to um, frame, put a, build a frame around our past and frame it in the good things, we can be caught up like so many other people that, d- did you know, I, I, I forget the, I forget <laughs> memory, um, I forget the, the, ra- the, the, ra- the ratio, the ratio, ratio, that when one good thing happens, we, re- you know, it, it takes a lot of effort to remember it. When one bad thing happens, it's compounded like 10 times. So we have to really take notice of what's going on in our life because we will build our life around things that have gone wrong. And it isn't that we don't have good things. It's just that bad things just like to compound themselves. And we're so prone to look at bad things. I mean, you know, all you have to do is look at the news and we'll find you know, all the bad things in the world, and they have tried to combat that by putting one good thing at the end. <laughs> you know, but that's man's way of trying to you know, not look so bad. But so in our life, then, we need to, you know, if I ask you to remember 10 good things that happened in your life, okay? Now, remember 10 bad things. <laughs> Which one comes up with the list more quickly? <laughs> We need to look at how we frame our memories. We need to look at how, you know, things, God has promised that all things work together for good, so how has God turned the negative into a positive? And how has God then transitioned, helped us transition from what was to what is and to where we're going with it? 
So years ago, we used to have what we called a testimony service in church. So under your seat, I put um, a, a um, tape. And if that's under your seat, I want you to stand up and give a testimony. Now there's nothing under your seat. <laughs> now there's fear in your life right there. You know, there's fear in your life. Why? Because we're going to have to say something. But we have to frame our life and look at the good things that happen. How many good things have happened and we just kind of take it for granted? But we need to stop and we need to look at the blessings. A testimony is often, I think it's associated with test and victory. <laughs> and our testimony is about the victory we have through the test. Now, sometimes we believe God is the one who brings us the test, and sometimes it's us who brings the test, and sometimes it's our society has nothing to do with us. But always our faith is in Christ. So a blessing, then, is that the test turns into something good and that we are giving thanks and that we're able to say good things about God even when bad things have not yet turned into the good. Where should we place our trust? In our ability to make things happen the right way? Or should we put our ability in the scriptures? 1 Corinthians 13, 7 says, Love always trusts and always hopes. The love, 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 <laughs> and we, we talk about it as agape love, sacrificial love. Sacrificial love always trusts and always hopes. So no matter what the situation is, there's a trust and there's a hope that is accompanying this. And so this is the lining of whatever happens in our life. Paul says we need to expect the best in every situation. Look for the best, believe for the best, expect the best. So many times we're caught in, <laughs> well, this is never going to work. I mean, do you ever, ever been around really negative people? I mean, you know, it's, I think they call her Debbie Downer <laughs> or David Downer or whomever. You, you don't want to be the downer. No matter what happens, it's, you know, the world is coming to an end. You know, the sky is falling. But, of course, there's going to be disappointments and things not turn out the way we want. You know, it's like football. They give you the ball, you're going to get tackled. Now, whether it's for a loss or for a gain, that's different. But, you, you know, it's like, you're going to, so why, they, no, don't give me the ball again. Why? Because I'm going to get tackled. Well, well, that's part of the game. Well, in our life, things are, people are going to get tackled. Sometimes you're going to have a setback. Sometimes you have to punt. <laughs> Sometimes you have to kick a field goal. Sometimes you have to go long and deep. Sometimes you have to fall on your face and say, oh, God, these people are going to beat me up. <laughs> but so how do, we, how do we see it? We just keep doing it because that's part of what our life is. In everything, give thanks. Here's the ball. <laughs> give thanks. Here's your life. Give thanks. Here's what's, what's we're thanking God, not the stars. Got to check my horoscope. Nope. That doesn't have anything to do with you because you don't belong to that horoscope. And you don't belong to those who believe in it. Ours is in the promises of God. So if we put our trust in people, it's going to fail. Why? Because people aren't perfect. <laughs> I was waiting for an amen. <laughs> people are not perfect. And whether they try to or not, they, people do fail. Even when people have proven themselves to be trustworthy, it isn't that they're not trustworthy, it's that they're human. We need to always trust in God. That's our testimony that we trust in God. Amen? Cliff? Amen? Harold? Amen? <laughs> yeah. We could testimony there, but we, we won't. We'll not say that for another day. Almost died, very ill, still have strength. God is with us, and there's a deeper testimony than just that. So, reflecting on Scripture. So whenever we begin to um, think about remembering, we, we want to remember scriptures because that's the foundational principles. We just had communion, and the foundational principle of our faith is Jesus, and he accompanies us 
in every situation. It, the scriptures even talk about he is the good shepherd who leads his sheep. So God is the one who is leading us down the path of life. He's our blocker. <laughs> you know, when you, whenever you're blocking for the other backs, you can say, you know, I'm just like God. <laughs> I go before you, and they better pay attention or you'll zap them. Don't mean to pick on you, but people. All right, so anyhow, it is a spiritual discipline that shapes the identity of our faith. A spiritual discipline, thinking about the scriptures, thinking about what God has said. I mean, we believe in God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. We believe that God is a creator of all things. He's a creator of the universe. He created man. He put him to sleep, took a rib out, created woman. Man woke up, and he says, whoa, that's not a man. It's a woman. That's a joke. <laughs> he didn't like it either. Okay, so... A few weeks ago, we started with Exodus, and there we would see uh, how Israel was brought out of Egypt. But the, uh, the, the de declaration is there would not be a nation of Israel if there wasn't the Exodus from Egypt. So those ten plagues that happened and, you know, cutting, you know, God enabling the children of Israel to get out of Egypt, that has affected our world today. What happened those centuries ago, probably 14, 1443 B.C., somewhere in there, that Israel was out of Egypt? That is affecting our world today. So thousands of years ago, we are in still in the middle of what is happening for, you know, those, year, those thousands of years ago in Israel and with the, air, and with the, the tax and things going on there. So it's still relevant. So believing in what God has done sets the perimeters for our faith. It is a reminder of God's abilities, that God is able to do things. You know, I, sometimes I was just thinking of, you know, I, I won't call on anyone, but you, you had experiences where God has done miraculous things in your life. You, you've had them, and... We can't bypass them. We have, and we have to remember them. And saying your testimony over and over again, well, I've heard that before, it doesn't matter. I like in the um, movie The Chosen, um, he goes to the woman at the well, it's Sychar, and, and Jesus reveals himself to her, and she runs into the city, and she says, come see a man who told me everything I ever did in my life. And the whole city comes out to meet Jesus. But in the movie, it has that everywhere she goes, she's saying, you know, she runs into Jesus somewhere along the street, and she's telling the lady, come see a man told me everything I know. And she says, you already told me. <laughs> you already told me that. You know, it's like everybody in town has heard her testimony. And, you know, they've heard it so much, you've already told them. And so in our life, we have that type of an experience with God. He has... He has forgiven us of our sins. He has established himself in our hearts and lives. You know, I guess one of the stories that, that I tell uh, over and over um, is one where the lady was dying, and, you know, and I went to visit her. She was in hospice. And she's on her deathbed, and her husband's on one side of the bed, and I'm on the other, and I know I've told you this. But the important thing is it's a, it, it tells us we have to remind ourselves of God and what, how capable God is and of what he can do for us, in us, and through us. And so she hadn't been to church in 30 years. I put my hand on hers. Her husband had the other hand. And I said to her, before you die, we need to have a confession and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And I said, repeat after me, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And she, wasn't, she couldn't carry on a conversation. And she mumbled, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And then long pause, very verbal, loud, not hollering, but Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Her husband looks at me and he says, what happened? 
I said she saw him. <laughs> See, the reality of a testimony, nobody can take that away. That testimony is there. It is an experience that I have had and this individual had, the family, the husband has had, and the family has spoken of it. And you see, no matter what people say about faith, about God, about the scriptures, you can't deny that experience. See, that's your testimony. You had a test, and you know how God has brought you through. Share that until people say, I've heard that a thousand times. Well, hear it again. I want you to know. You know, and the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, that, that is the foundation of their faith. They still celebrate Passover, the day, the night in which the angel of death passed over their homes because the blood of the lambs that they had sacrificed was on their homes. All the firstborn of the Egyptian homes died. God let the people go. The angel of death, Christ in our life, death doesn't have a hold of us, can never have a hold of us because the blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ, is on our hearts. Psalm 77, 11 says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. I will remember what God has done. You know, even if we look at the scriptures and we look at the woman who had the, uh, the issue of blood, that she had a bleeding problem for 10 years or whatever the, the amount of years was, 10 or 12 years, and she had spent everything she had, and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. See, there are, those are s real stories of real people and real experiences. And we can talk about that. And we can express that as our testimony. You know, that touches my heart. That touches my life. Our personal testimony. That's what God has done for us. God's provision in times of need. I think of the, the lady, um, she's, she, this is, well, she, she's very poor, but she's a believer. And next door there is this agnostic, and he's always, you know, confronting her about his, her faith and so on. So he hears her pray that, God, we have no food, we have no groceries, we have a great need in our house. And the guy hears, it, and hears her pray, and he says, I'm going to get her groceries. So he gets the groceries, puts them on the porch, and when the lady comes out and says, oh, God, thank you for uh, bringing my groceries. And the guy comes around and says, no, nah, God didn't do it. I did it. And she says, God, thank you for giving my groceries and even using the devil to bring them. <laughs> That's my testimony. <laughs> God's provisions. So God's provision in times of need. There's healings and restorations where God has touched our hearts and touched our lives physically and spiritually. There is a spiritual transformation when people have received Christ, and they're not the same person that they were before. They're different from the inside out. Remember God's faithfulness as a congregation. Do you know the date? I, just, I don't know if you know it or not. But the date that our church was established was 12, December 15th, 1930. So in December, we will be 94 years old. We should have a picnic. Where's the, where, 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 Bobby? He's not here. Yeah, I was looking for him. He's not. We got two. We'll have a celebration of a congregation. So in, in 94 years old, in, in, Je 12, in December 15th. So there is an oral history about the congregation, an oral history of how we began and how that the church began and um, they began down on Railroad Street, so Midway, there we go. So anyhow, we have all those things and how that the, okay, let me get all this straight. It was the Brethren Church and the Evangelical Church. This was the Evangelical Church, and there was a Brethren Church up on the hill, and so they became the Evangelical United Brethren, and moved here. Then, as a congregation, they merged with the Methodists and became the United Methodists, moved from here up the street to where the, the church burnt down. That used to be the old United Methodist Church, which is now down by the high-rise. 
So the, the understanding is there's an oral history. But as the church was on Midway, this became available and they were able to move in. So we were, we, this, our congregation has been here for 94 years. So, and there is the remembrance of communion. That's the most important thing that we can take time to remember. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Never forget what I have done for you. Never forget that by my stripes you are healed. By my death on the cross, by my broken body and shed blood, by my blood you are, your sins are washed, by my resurrection, so will you be resurrected. You see, all of these things are in remembrance. We take time to remember. The spiritual benefits of remembering. Remembering God's wonders, his works, serve, very, very <laughs> serve many spiritual functions. Remembering has a strengthening of faith. When God has seen you through difficult times, when everything seemed to be lost and wasn't going to work, but we found that something did happen, that we remember how God acted and how that God brought us through those things. Being grateful, remembering God's wonderful things, remembering how God specially touched your life, remembering God's answer to prayer when you prayed for things and prayed for people and how that those, they became answers to your prayers. How that we remember to worship God that we acknowledge God and celebrate his power and his provision. Just to say thank you, God. To stop in the moments of our time and just say thank you, God. Thank you for doing, for being with me and helping me. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for working all things together for good. So we, you know, we pray for our families. We pray for our parents our children, our grandkids, we pray for them and we thank God that he, there is no distance in prayer. And they are never so far away from God that they can't be reached. Always remember, you are a lighthouse for God. And no matter how far out to sea people may go that you love, you don't move. Your faith in God is a light that shines out to their life because they know the way home. God's amazing grace. His love continues to go out through the light that you give. It's important that we remember to write things down. You know, I don't write journals. I should. You know, for me, I, can, I can't remember. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> you know, well, it was a joke at the wedding last week. The, the nephew says, tell Uncle Dave. He won't remember. <laughs> you know? And they wanted to know something. Don't ask him. He won't remember. You know, ask Rhonda. He'll, she'll know. So I always defer. You want to know something? There she is. You, know? you want to know what my favorite color is? I forgot, but ask Rhonda. You know? Beca it, I just don't remember, so I should journal. I don't. <laughs> so you would think that, you know, over the years, I always thought, you know, I had... You, you always search for illustrations. You always search for things to, to put in a message and so on. And I had all those messages. I had years of messages. I mean, I had stacks, you know, of all the sermons I had ever preached until we moved through this last time, and I burned them all. And after a while, I think, you should have kept some of those <laughs> because there were good illustrations in there. I don't remember them. So... So don't forget to write things down. Mo build memorials. I like this in Joshua chapter 4, verse 4. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, okay? Joshua, they're crossing the, the Jordan, and he calls 12 individual, one man from each tribe. And he said, go over before the ark of the Lord, as you're going through the, the water, um, and and your God, and into the middle of the Jordan, each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulders 
according to the number of the tribes of Israel, 12, and to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask, what do these stones mean? (laughs) So they were building a memorial of stones on the other side of the river so that in the future when people say, what do those pile of stones mean? That's the place we crossed the Jordan and God stopped the waters. Mark God's miracles with plaques, with banners. We have them around the church. One individual wanted a plaque for their loved one. It's on the back pew. (laughs) They wanted a plaque because that's where they sat. So there are practical ways to remember. Remember to tell your story. Remember to tell your story. Every one of us have a story of what God has done for us. There is a prayer of thanksgiving and meditation. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So we're setting up a standard. Present your request with thanksgiving. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. A prayer of thanksgiving. Regular prayer that includes thanksgiving. We're, and it's not just the celebration that we have once a year. Psalm 103 says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Don't forget what God has done. So with all this together, how then do we look into our future? We've got the ever-changing present, the always stacking up past. So remember God's wonders. What is your favorite Bible story? Anybody have one? What is your favorite Bible story? Anybody have one? Just jump, pop up. Moses. And we find that in Moses, there's, there's something significant about that. And, you know, Daniel, <laughs> Lion's Den. Sometimes I like Jonah. Because Jonah, is, he's, really, he's really a guy, he doesn't want to do what God wants him to do. <laughs> God says, go preach at Nineveh. I don't like Nineveh. <laughs> Those people are terrible people, and I'm not listening. So he gets on a boat and goes the other way. God says, hey, Jonah. <laughs> no, he didn't do that. There's a storm, <laughs> and they figure out Jonah's the bad guy. He throw him over. He's like, hey, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going to die at sea. Yes, jumps, does a swan dive into the ocean. I'm dead. Not so. (laughs) A prepared fish picks him up (laughs) and takes him right to the beach and says, go to Nineveh. (laughs) God has a way of bringing things about. So, but you see, all of these things shape our future. There's stories that touch our life here, but not only do they help us in the moment, they help us plan for the future. Because as God was with Moses, he'll be with me. And so even whenever I seemingly don't want to do what God wants me to do, he's going to put me back on course. (laughs) So we see ourselves perhaps in light of Bible stories, what they mean to us. And that's perhaps how we see our future how that God is going to work in our lives to take us where he wants us to be. So, your testimony is your experience, and no one can correct it because it's yours. And a testimony is admissible in a court of law because it's your experience. Amen? Jesus, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for these reminders of what you have done for us. And Lord, we want to remember your working, your wonders. We want to remember how you've worked in our life and the lives of those around us, for our congregation, for our our nation, for the nation of Israel. God, we thank you that we can remember and we can build our faith on these experiences that others have had 
but Lord, they are also experiences that we have had. We remember the hand of God upon our life. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen.